Hello, my loves, and welcome back to a new episode of It's Karmic with me, your host, Vika Bradford. Today, we have probably one of the best conversations. I just know it's going to be the best conversation. I'm welcoming to the podcast my dear soul sister, Ashley of Sacred Soulful Shop, the creator of that. She's a yogi. She's just all the good things. She's a wild woman. She's my sister. Welcome, Ashley. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. So excited. So for those of you listening, Ashley and I have been friends for, okay, since at least 2017, because that's when I did my yoga training and that's when I met you. So you did your yoga training, I think a year or two before me. I did. Yeah. 2013. Isn't that crazy? Okay. Wait, way more years before me. So you did it like five years before me. Wow. Yeah, 2013 wow. finished. Yeah. So 10 years ago. Wow. <laughs> okay. Wow. So we were able to connect in that space. Ashley came in and facilitated the most delicious and juicy workshop for restorative yoga. And I literally was hooked to restorative yoga after you tucked me in like a little sushi roll that day. Oh my God. I still, people still ask for like that burrito tuck. Like it is so juicy. It feels so good. And uh, if anybody is uh, in the area for Vaughn for some restorative yoga, I cannot wait to like, just get everybody nice and cozy and do a little crystal magic. So that can be like, just fully received. We're going to have to do that at the retreat. <laughs> Absolutely. Ooh, little, 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 um, what is the word? Uh, foreshadowing there. <laughs> <laughs> foreshadowing of something to come that we're going to tell you guys all about in this episode in some way. So tell us how you got here because you know your journey through just the years I've known you. I think we're at what like eight years, seven years, seven years, um, maybe a little less, six. I don't know, guys, math. But your journey has been so expansive, you know, from the minute I met you as what I knew you in that moment as Ashley, the yoga teacher, the hand to heart, um, creator, you know, Ashley owned a own still. Yes. Are you still doing hand to heart? Yeah. It's a little bit more like by request now, okay. but, um, it's, it's definitely phasing out a little bit, but still doing like eye pillows, um, and just extra little like home goodies for yogis or anybody wanting that self-care. So it is still there a little bit. Okay. So it was all the good, like t-shirts with the cutest yogi sayings and the eye pillows and all the, the good things. I just loved you guys so much. So your journey from that of meeting you there and thinking, you know, when we meet someone, we're like, this is who you are to who you are now. Can you tell us like about that journey, how the hell you got here and what you're doing now? Yeah, I don't even know where to start, but you know what? I'll just put it out there and see what comes through. But yeah, Vika and I connected when I remember coming in and assisting your yoga training and how beautiful was that? And I can't believe how long ago it was truly. Um, again, I can't count the years, but that was oh, such an important time of my life because it just kind of got me and helped me build my confidence as a yoga teacher and kind of honing my skills and being able to assist my teacher at the time was so cool. Um, but I basically found yoga as I was doing, I was working in retail. That was like my full-time job. And this was years ago. And I was really struggling, like finding balance um, with my mental health. I was drinking a lot. I was going out and I was I just felt really disconnected from my body and I had found yoga um, as a student. And from there, I just knew the way that like yoga made me feel. It was like the beginning, I like to say like finding yoga was sort of the beginning of my spiritual awakening. And it's been since, you know, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago until now, but yoga was really like this catalyst that just kind of opened up and showed me what was possible. And I knew I wanted to be a yoga teacher. I knew I wanted to share this gift with other people. And I, as soon as my yoga teacher training finished, I like quit my job. I was like, I'm going to go all in on myself. Wow. I had maybe one class lined up and like, you know, how scary that can be. 
Um, but like, I knew that's what I wanted to share with the world. So I just did it. I got to build my business. I got to come back and connect with other yogis. And then, you know, through opening some businesses, you had mentioned hand to heart. Um, it was like yoga apparel. I always have had this like entrepreneurial spirit. I always wanted to kind of just be my own boss and do my own thing, um, to give myself space, you know, to travel, to explore, to work on myself. And from there, you know, I got into crystals. I did a crystal healing certification. So I started seeing people in my house and then I was ended up giving basically like my crystals away to my clients. So I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> now I'm running low on crystals. So I started um, a shop a couple of years back and it has been incredible. It's exploded with magical people and community and growth. And it's given me such freedom to explore myself even more. So I want to say like last year, around May or June, um, I kind of started to focus on like energetically what I needed. I was feeling a little bit disconnected. I kind of had that urge to learn more. And I kind of I've explored a lot of the yoga options. I did my crystal healing. I kind of called myself like an intuitive energy healer. So I knew I wanted something different. So I began to work with my coach now, and it's been a lot around sexuality, wealth, money, embracing the wild women within, um, finding my wild women friends around me, which of course we came back together and we got to mm -hmm. ignite this joint passion which has been so beautiful but through through that through investing in myself saying yes to plant medicine retreats saying yes to year-long containers to working with coaches to help inspire me and help me remember who I be it's been so beautiful I feel like I've been cracked open I feel like I'm a different person there's so much like satisfaction and just ease and just being and knowing who I am like a this beautiful deep remembrance of just like yep that is me I am her and I'm just showing up as her each and every day now oh my god I love it because I see it I I see it happening all the time you know just through your Instagram and then when I'm energetically with you it's even more there just it's just you're exuding this um I don't know this vibration of just love and joy and it's been such a honor to watch you go through that growth from someone I really looked up to, you know, at the start of my yoga training, I was like, this girl's the bomb. Like, look at her. She's just king shit over here into like even more of that. Right. And you're right. Like that call of us both being called back into the wild. I was noticing the other day that you're one of the soul sisters that got the snake on your left or on your right arm there's something happened in the last couple of years during the last three years, 2020, 2021. Um, so I'm interested to know when you got yours because something happened where a bunch of women who vibrate at the same frequency as us, use the same words as us, recognize themselves as wild women, all unknowingly betwixt to each other, got a snake tattoo on their right arm. It's crazy. I freaking love that. I think mine was 2021. I got okay. mine. Then. Yeah. I think mine was 2020. Okay. I had a dream that there were these, um, I was laying in a shaman's lap and he was singing over me. So I'm like laying, he's cross-legged and I'm laying with my head in his lap and he's singing and like rattling over me. And he's like, it, it was this pure initiation this dream was crazy and these rattlesnakes are swimming up my belly these two rattlesnakes up and down my belly and in the dream I wasn't afraid I wasn't bit I wasn't like nervous and he was just singing over me and it was just like this wealth of love and I knew I woke up and I was like holy shit I was just initiated into something and that's when I got this tattoo was that right after that dream I was like this has to go on my body and it had to be an Egyptian style um wrap and like it was this whole thing and then all of a sudden like it wasn't that anyone knew about my tattoo or anyone else's tattoos all these women just started getting it and then they'd be like holy shit you have what the fuck is going on we all seem to have this snake now on our right arm I swear there was some sort of initiation that happened in the last couple of years I love that. And when I met my mentor in person, when I showed up to her ayahuasca retreat, the first thing she said was like, oh, there's a snake tattoo. And she has one as well. Stop <laughs> it. Like, okay. Like, here we go. 
there's uh, something there's something here totally oh gosh okay so so we're both kind of on this wild journey you are like you're so deep in like the crystals it's so beautiful to watch you expand and um expand everything through sacred soulful shop and your membership and your people so let's talk about the wild woman because that's I think why we're both here mm. so let's for anyone listening that possibly doesn't even know what that means can you put your little twist on what that means oh yeah sure oh to me let me just close my eyes and just like feel into this but for me, the wild woman, she dances and marches to the beat of her own drum. She moves from a place of knowing who she is and what she offers to the world. She is herself unapologetically. She doesn't care what people think about her. She shows up for herself first and foremost. It's all about, you know, finding freedom and liberation in a way that feels authentic for her. So my wild woman might be a little different than your wild woman, which might be a little bit different than someone else's wild woman. But for me, my wild woman has a lot of ease, a lot of knowing, there's a lot of steadiness to her. Her presence is her power. She is comfortable and confident in her body, whatever that looks like. And there's this like fun essence to her as well. It's kind of like a mix of like Kali energy, like really mm -hmm. kind of like dark feminine and wild, but mixed with a little bit of like softness, more like that goddess energy. For me, that is sort of like my interpretation of the wild woman. Oh my God. And that's so on point for your astrology because you've got your Libra, which is the Aphrodite, the, um, the loving, although Aphrodite had her wrath, but like, you know, it's the loving goddess energy that we think about when we're thinking about the goddess, but the Kali energy is so the Scorpio, right? It's the Scorpio energy. So when you're saying this, I'm like, of course, of course, those two <laughs> archetypes is the witch. It's the, um, it's all those things. Like, it's like, it's the witch the lo and the lover, the peacemaker, the dove mixed with like the depths of that witchy um, archetype, un unearthing deep, deep psychological healing shaman energy, right? Mm. Mm. Yes, yes. I love, and I see that for you so much. Like, you know, <laughs> I've read, I read Ashley's chart a couple times, guys, and we always find like a, wealth of golden nuggets to pull out of your because you have this Scorpio signature which is your depths and it's so juicy to work with that mm, yeah I love that. okay so so while we were were before we got on this call guys we were planning our retreat that we're hosting together and we were talking a lot about you know leadership leadership in the wild woman. And something that came up was the idea of like, when you were talking about your wild woman there, I was like, yeah, like all our wild women are going to be different archetypes. They're going to have different flavors, but leadership is one thing that seems to come through with every wild woman, right? That's a theme of this. Um, and when we were talking before we hopped on the call, we were talking about how uh, the idea of leadership when you're just listening to who, who was a leader. Now it's like you run a business. You um, like, that's what you do now, right? You run an online business, you're a coach or a healer or something like that. Uh, but it isn't always that, right? So can you speak to how a leader is much more than like the pigeonhole peg of what mm. the world is telling us a leader is and how that blends into the wild woman? Ooh, so good. Yeah, I think we're all leaders. Like we all have those leadership qualities within us. And it's funny, as you were saying that, I was even thinking about the word like guru. We're always like looking sort of outside of ourselves for all these answers. But when we're leaders, when we're our own guru, when we're our own teachers, it's like actually an opportunity to really look inwards and find that healer, that leader, that guru inside of us, no matter whether we have a business or not, um, how we show up 
day to day is like us owning sort of our leadership and how we want to connect with our communities, our families, our friends, our coworkers, whatever that may look like. And when we were talking earlier, we were chatting about, you know, um, you know, we really feel like we're calling in leaders to our retreat. Um, and again, leaders can be, be moms. Maybe you're a stay-at-home mom, but you are also a leader of your family. You are carving out your own path to share with like your little ones and different things like that. So the idea of a leader to me can be absolutely anyone, you know, on social media, like we're all leaders, we're all trailblazers. It's like really how we're showcasing our alignment, our offerings, our love, our hearts, and like really what we want to put out and sort of the imprint we want to leave on the world. That's how I kind of think about that. Yeah, I agree completely. And like, even beyond social media, I think about, you know, the women out there not using social media and they, maybe the world right now would say they're not a leader because they're not Mm. putting their message in front of anyone, but their leadership role is to be leading outside of the norm. Um, And I've been really thinking about the, the soul's that I'm calling in for the next container that is being birthed with me right now and how these souls, they don't want to live life on anyone else's terms. They're done living life on anyone else's terms. And that's a leader. So it doesn't mean the shape of the world that we've put a a new box. It's just a new box, right? To be, you have to be on social media. You have to do it this way. You have to run a business. It's just another box. Whereas there are women out there just milking cows and, you know, um, wandering in the woods. And that's their role is to lead through that. And maybe they write books or maybe they just simply show up in the grocery store and inspire people with their wild ways in that way. So I like this, um, this idea of the people we're calling in don't have to look a certain way. don't have to have a certain role of leadership. They just are leaders. Mm, I absolutely love that. Yes. Okay. Mm, So good. So let's talk about, let's talk about some of your journeys you've been going on (laughs) because you've been going to some places both physically and metaphysically over Mm -hmm. at least the last year right I I remember when you went on your first um, really big retreat there so you've hosted retreats we'll put that out there you've done retreats before but you've also been going on these very beautiful journeys that I've just watched from Instagram like oh I want this there's like this loving jealousy inside me so can you mm-hmm. tell us about your your journeys a little bit yeah it oh, it's so beautiful for me to actually like sit back and like recognize that in the last year I've been able like to go on to retreats I have hosted for oh my gosh probably since like 2016 2017 I would do like an international uh yoga retreat and I would take a group um every year we did uh, my partner and I you know we do some local yoga retreats and as I was, I've I've kind of been going more into this inner work, um, these upgrades, so to speak, um, and looking at things through such different lenses, I knew I wanted to invest in myself and to go on um, a few retreats. So the first one I went on was last September. Um, I felt the call to go with my mentor. She was taking a group of women to Costa Rica, to Solterra, to do a ayahuasca retreat. And I have previously done ayahuasca uh, once before. I had done it at a local facility here, actually, um, in the May. And I had a really interesting experience, which was really beautiful. It kind of... um, it kind of brought me back to the beginning of my spiritual awakening. And it was all about like connecting me back to like my yoga roots. If you believe can believe this. So Vika knows we have an invocation because we are technically like Anusara trained. um, And it's an invocation you sing at the beginning of your uh, class, you sing it at the end of the class. So when we were in teacher training weekends, we'd be singing this song and chanting this song. I don't know, like 50 times a weekend. (laughs) So if you can believe it, that song came on during my first ayahuasca experience and I just had the biggest smile on my face and just like I always joke and like my my face is or my eyes are sweating because I'm crying it's just like these happy tears pouring down my face and it was just so beautiful I was 
when I did this ayahuasca experience, I was really deep into the crystal business and I had kind of stopped teaching yoga, um, not permanently, but I had to take a break because the crystal business was doing so well. And it was like, this was a reminder that it's always going to be within me. It's, it's my Dharma. It's my purpose. I'm meant to share this gift with others. And like, it was like a full 360 of like my whole journey of like what I had gone through. It was like a big hug telling me like, you're still on the right path. You are always going to have that within you. Like you're good. So my first experience was a lot more, it was, it was gentle. It was, it was very affirming and it was lovely, but I knew I wanted to go deeper. So when I said yes to this retreat, I knew I was going to be sitting with the medicine. I thought three times we actually sat with the medicine four times within a week. It was the first all woman group in the Maloka. So the Maloka is where we would do ceremony. We had two women Shipibo maestras, our shamans, our healers leading us the first time it has ever been again, all women with the shamans, as well with our facilitators who were supporting us, um, as well as my mentor and uh, another, another space holder, Tish, who was incredible. And that journey in itself is indescribable. I actually still don't even really have words. I go back to my journals all the time. It is, it was beautiful. So with ayahuasca, if you're unfamiliar with it, they always, you know, the joke is you might not get what you ask for, but like you get what you need type of thing. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can go in with an intention or something you want to see, you want to feel, you want to experience, but at the end of the day, like grandmother ayahuasca is going to give you exactly what you need to experience. And I had such different experiences through my four journeys. Um, the first night was, uh, the best way to describe it was energetic surgery. I felt these upgrades. I felt the medicine weaving through my body, through the Icaros. So the way that um, our shamans worked is um, they are from the Shipibo lineage and they would come and actually sing us the Icaros to each of us individually and then as a whole. And we would get the mother and the daughter. And it was I felt it. I couldn't even sit up the first night. You're supposed to kind of sit up to receive um, their, their blessings and the magic, but I couldn't the first night, but I felt it so deeply. I felt the medicine working through me, clearing out any old blocks, clearing out any unworthiness, anything, any doubt, any fear I had was flushing me clean. And I believe my intention was really like to feel and to connect with myself on a deeper level. And that energetic surgery was like, instant upgrade it was so beautiful and then the next night was totally different I had a little bit of a higher dosage that night and there was a thunderstorm happening outside and the thunderstorm and the lightning was so loud the lightning hit like almost hit the maloka like some of the facilitators that weren't there, the male facilitators that were like in their cabins, just holding space for us, our soul brothers, we like to call them. They were like, yo, there's some witchcraft going on in that, uh, in that area tonight. Like it was crazy. And as soon as that happened, I started to freak out a little bit. I'm like, this is an initiation. I'm like, I can't do this. I'm like, is this part of my trip? Is this part of my journey? I just wasn't sure. So I had to surrender. I had to surrender to what was. I had to trust my journey. This is the beginning. It hadn't even started fully yet. And I was just like, okay, I am here. I'm going to be present with myself and I'm just going to go wherever I need to go. And that night I went the deepest that I had gone. And really the thing that came through for me was that I had the answer. Like I had everything inside of me. It was like this profound epiphany of like, I'm nothing, but I'm everything, if that makes sense. Like, I have it all. I have all the answers. I have all the codes. I have absolutely everything. But then at the same time, I'm like, it's just me. I'm nothing. I'm like, I'm just, I'm, I'm the isness of it. I'm like, just being in it, which was so cool. And so many things started to unlock and unravel from there. And my last two journeys were like a little softer. Um, I had started my moon cycle and I had really asked just to be nurtured 
by grandmother ayahuasca to just be held to still feel to also connect and hold space for my other sisters going through the journey and my last two journeys were were so gentle so beautiful so nurturing and it really like just built my connection even more like with the medicine and I definitely feel the call to probably do it again another time to go even even deeper from what I experienced I don't feel the call right yet but I definitely know that I will be sitting with the medicine another time and Vika knows that I did a women's retreat in Costa Rica, a wild woman one recently too. And we had the chance to explore some mushrooms and through the mushrooms and being back in Costa Rica, we had an ayahuasca tree right outside our retreat uh, house. That was like, I transcended. I had an out of body experience. It was like, I actually felt ayahuasca coming back in and even sober the first night I landed in the jungle, I was already starting to have ayahuasca visions. I was seeing the snakes. I was seeing the Icaros. I was seeing the patterns. It was like, welcome back to the jungle, babe. You're here. I see you like, let's go even more. <laughs> wow. Right. Oh my gosh. I love that so much. And like just peeling those layers back. Oh, so just watching you just through Instagram, watching you go through this, I could see like your energy just shifting. It was wild. Um, so now hearing the exact process of you had to like purge so that you can make space and then, you know, clear and like sit with the fear and then be nurtured and nourished and then come back to her and she was just like waiting for you. It's so powerful. So beautiful. It's so beautiful. That connection is definitely always within you. And they always say too, like your ayahuasca journey starts before you even drink the medicine. Like as soon as you sign up or as soon as you say yes, or you make that decision, you're already going to start to go through the initiations that are going to take you to also to where you need to go, which is so profound and so cool how it how it works but of course it works like that <laughs> mm -hmm. oh my gosh this is amazing so how do you feel like like these these retreats and these journeys has shifted your life so far honestly it's it's really reminded me of of who I am um as simple as that sounds the way I felt so whole, so complete, so open, tender, raw. And this is good. I'm taking back to like my ayahuasca retreat. I remember taking a picture of myself on the last day and I'm just like, I don't feel like my energy, my aura, my body has ever been that like satisfied, relaxed, and just, just being before. Cause I'm always doing, I'm always, I'm very, I'm a manifesting generator. So I can do a lot of things at once. And I like all the things that I love, like um, the more, the better, like I, I love it. I thrive <laughs> on that. So I'm really learning to slow down to honor my needs and to find like my, my word this year is like steadiness. So I definitely brought that in from ayahuasca and the same thing, like on this retreat, like it felt so beautiful to disconnect, to not always be on my phone, to not always have to show up, to let go of the business, to be more in my feminine energy. Um, we were talking a lot at our women's retreat and it's like the queen is still running her queendom whereas the priestess just is she like lifts her hand she shares her magic and it's like a vibe so I'm really working on now dropping into like my priestess energy and moving away from that queen energy so I can have more flow more ease less structure and just focus on like my presence and how I be and how I show up now within my business Oh, that's so potent. Yeah. It makes me think instantly of like tar tarot and how mm -hmm. the queens are not in the major arcana, right? I've been climbing the Kabbalah tree of life with uh, one of my mentors right now. And the high priestess is like right underneath the magician. And mm -hmm. like you, the queen is, she's, she's in the minor arcana, right? She's like, she's busy. Whereas the priestess, like, you're right. She just, she just is. She just knows that everything's working out and she energetically calls everything she needs in. There's no worry. 
so that beingness that really resonates with me. It's something I'm, I'm trying to figure out right now too. It's just to stop being like that, that quote, like, um, human doing the human beings and human doings. Like I'm being, mm-hmm. I'm a human doing right now. Um, so you're <laughs> stepping that. into that being right. And that's, that's big work. That's not easy to, to move into. It certainly is not. It takes a lot of, of trust, a lot of surrender and like different relationships, but all, ultimately within yourself, <laughs> like to trust, like, okay, I don't have to be doing and going and creating all the time when I can be more in that surrender. That's actually when the most magical ideas and, and visions and just beautiful gifts truly start to appear. A hundred percent. I love this so much. Okay. So speaking of journeys, like let's talk about our journey we're creating right yeah. now. We're birthing this beautiful offering that's coming out. Do you want to tell everybody about it? Sure. I can't even remember. Did I message you when I was in Costa Rica or did I come yes. home? No, I, you I, were I, there. <laughs> you were there. Cause I remember the first retreat you went on last year, you came home and I remember you being on Instagram, just being like, I can't, I can't give anything out right now. Like I need to be in and I think you had messaged me at that time. I don't know what we were talking about. And you were like, I just actually have to be like in my space right now. I can't talk about what I experienced. Like can't share it. It's got to be mine right now. And I was like, Ooh, I honor that. Yeah. I think that we were doing my past life regression. Okay. Yes. Oh my gosh. It was right <laughs> after. Yes. That's exactly yeah. what it was. Was you were in your, pro- we were doing your past life regression. Yeah. hundred percent. And I remember you just being like, I can't right now. Like it's got to be, <laughs> yeah. You were like, I'm in the cocoon. Um, whereas this one, you were like, on the retreat and you were like, Hey, so we're going to be running a retreat together. Yeah. The call was really, really loud. And I all, something that also really came up for me while I was on the women's retreat was I really loved connecting with my sister. So, um, the most recent retreat I went on, uh, two of the girls that I did the ayahuasca experience with also had signed up the retreat the, for this wild women retreat that we went on and we actually didn't even know. And of But of course, we all came together. We got to spend time together before the retreat, after the retreat. And when we did go on that mushroom journey together, the three of us connected with that Aya energy was like we were in our own realm. Like we were working that magic together. It was so beautiful to see. And being with my sisters, it really created this sense of I wanted to have this community and I wanted to be around like minded souls when I got home as well. And I'm like, more women need to experience and have opportunities to go on retreats and do this work that I did. I truly believe that. I said that to my mentor. I'm like, everyone needs to experience this. And I messaged you because I was like, I felt in my core, I was like, no, I got to do something. I wanted to do a women's retreat. I didn't want to do it solo. You were the first person that came to my mind. And I was like, I have to do this with Vika. I'm like, this isn't, we might do yoga. We might do meditation. We might do breath work, but like, this is so much more then a yoga retreat like this is now turning into such an upgrade such a beautiful opportunity for freedom and liberation for women to come to a safe space to be together to be encouraged to step outside their comfort zone to really feel their magic their power their hearts to honor their beautiful bodies and to share their gifts with themselves and the world so as soon as I mentioned it to you, I think I said to you, I said, you don't even have to answer right away. And you answered right away. And I'm like, oh, this is happening. Like literally you, you're you like, you don't have to respond right now. Like sit and think about it. And I was like, no, hi. Because when you had messaged me for weeks, I had been having these like seeds planted of like, I need more community. I need to be with women. I need to run retreats. I need to be in sacred space with my people again, because I really haven't had that since my wild woman circles back in BC. And I've been just aching to get back into that space and just be with women and scream and shout and dance and be in our bodies and cry and feel and like the transformation I watched um through I'm trying to remember if it was seven circles I did those seven circles whatever it was was like the the transformation I saw in each woman you know who stuck around and um, is still kind of in my sphere was so potent 
And I was like, I need this. I need this. I need this. And then you like pop into my DMS. And I was like, no, no, like, (laughs) thank you for, uh, you were the universe just being like, hi, here it is. It's right here. (laughs) Literally it was like silver platter, like let's go. So we booked our space. Mm -hmm. We are going to be here in Ontario and like, oh my God, when you sent me, so for you guys listening, Ash sent me like a plethora of Airbnbs. And the first one was the one we chose. And I was just like, this is the one. And so we're headed there on a beach yes. Yes. in July, in the warmth, in the sun, in the summer. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm so excited. Three nights, four days with us. If you want to save the date, I believe it's July 6th to ninth. And again, we're going to yes. be up north in Meaford, Ontario. We have the most gorgeous waterfront property for you. So think about, you know, those beautiful summers up north, the beautiful sunsets, the sunrises, the twinkling stars, your beautiful body dancing in the water. Like it oh is my going gosh. to be so juicy and delicious. We're starting, um, we're creating like an application process for this. We are accepting eight women and we really want to find, we're really calling in um, people that we really feel that are going to be the right fit for this, that are ready to go outside their comfort zone. They're ready for that expansion. Um, They're excited to try new things. They are wanting to step into their power, reclaim their power. Mm -hmm. Um, Do we want to give any hints around anything else? What do you think? Mm -hmm. I mean, let's say there will be dancing. (laughs) <laughs> there will be an option to free yourself aka get naked and shake it um and really good music and really good food amazing we're gonna we you're gonna be totally taken care of if you're feeling the call to come to this you are gonna be nourished you're gonna have again beautiful accommodations we are not telling you the schedule which means all <laughs> you have to do is show up and be ready to be taken care of. This is our gift to you. And this is totally different than how I run yoga retreats internationally. I always have a schedule, but going to retreats and and not knowing and truly trusting has been so liberating for me. And it's so nice to not think about, oh my gosh, I have to be here at 3.30. I have free time at this time. No, Mm -mm. we're gonna tell you as we go, arrive at this time, maybe wear this, do this, this is the vibe, all of that stuff. And the workshops that we have planned for you are going to be so good. Like I cannot wait, like dancing, acting, think sacred rage, finding that dark feminine, dropping into your medicine woman. It is going to be a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like all I envision when I think about it is just um, the sense of being cracked open, just cracked <sighs> open, expanded, exposed in the best way. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, exposing yourself to yourself oh. and, and bonding community, something we've been starved of for three years. Um, thank you, Aquarius, Sa- Saturn and Aquarius. Thanks for that. Um, something we've literally been starved of for three years. And now we're going to tap into let's, let's rebond. Let's reconnect, right? Make those sacred connections like you were able to make with your sisters and the way I used to feel in yoga training and oh my god it's gonna be so juicy I cannot wait for this seriously so if you guys are listening to this you know around the time around the time I'm going to be dropping this episode the application will be live and ready for you so it'll be in the show notes whether you're on the podcast or on YouTube just like look below it's going to be there for you if this is like a hell yes if you're listening later on and you've missed the deadline or you know this is a year from now and you're like oh this episode sounded interesting ayahuasca and journeys and wild woman um (laughs) ash and i are gonna do more retreats so just like pay attention if you happen to be listening uh down the line because there might be other stuff coming through internationally we have plans to go go all around the world (laughs) Yeah, we definitely, definitely are going to do more than one of these. We've talked about, you know, having some different themes come in. So that way, if people want to come back and join us again, there's always going to be that growth and elevation of um, an expansion of what we're putting out there as well. And right now we're thinking Ontario, but, you know, as we move into the future, the West Coast, international, absolutely, for sure. 
BC, Greece, Egypt. We've got we've got plans, <laughs> guys. So I love this. Mm-hmm. Okay, so before we wrap up today, tell my people like how they can connect with you because we've got your shop, which is like my goodie basket of like just addictions and like all the other things they can connect with you because you have your membership too. So tell us all the things. Yeah. So, um, it's so many places that we can connect. Um, my personal page is just Ashley and Irwin, all one word. I'm sure Vika will have that in the show notes as well. That's where, you know, I showcase, you know, when I'm away, the, the stuff that I am working on and growing through, it's a beautiful space just to kind of like come and say hi and see like what real life is like for me as a business owner and as someone who is still going through my own, you know, transformation as well. Um, And then we have sacred soulful shop, all one word. That's my crystal page. So we do do crystal live sales twice a week. We have our website connected to there. And then sort of our sister account from that is Sacred Soulful Collective. And I like to do a lot of free content on there. So there's a whole bunch of guided meditations, crystal meditations, regular meditations, a lot of shareable content around, you know, the benefits of women's groups. We talk about, you know, different things like crystals for your signs. I always am trying to post a lot of like good juicy content on there um, that's just accessible for everyone. So you can find me on either of those pages. Um, and then my women's group is called a sacred sanctuary and it's just, um, it's a monthly membership, uh, women's group. We meet online, we connect, um, on the full moons and new moons. I wouldn't necessarily call them new moon or full moon ceremonies. Um, each month there's a different theme. So we've been really diving deep into money and abundance and wealth and riches the last couple months. So redefining our relationship with money, um, looking at what else needs to be aligned in our life to be able to receive and hold big money. So um, it's just one of the themes that we do. And then I also offer, you know, some yoga, some restorative and some bonus and embodiment practices. So for example, I just recorded a 20 minute like sensuality movement embodiment practice for the girls with like the best playlist. It's like all like Tantra, like dance, electronic music. Like it's Mm. so fun. They're like lit on fire. I might have to send it to you. I feel like you're going (laughs) to, okay, I'm going to send it to you because I think you're going to like it, but that's just a little bit about what we do there. Um, So you can always message me right now. We're not necessarily open um, to receive new members, but we do have something called the spring drop-in. So if you are listening to this kind of in real time, time you can just send me a message and I can share with what's available or if you feel that call message me and we'll make something work for sure I love it so Mm -hmm. many ways to work with you and for anyone Mm -hmm. listening like I'm sure if you got this far in the podcast you're already like I follow 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 like (laughs) like in in the uh the links already because Ashley's just such a you're just such a vibe So for those of you listening, go follow. I'll put everything in the show notes so you guys can, you know, connect as easily as possible with Ashley. And if you guys are feeling called to come onto that retreat, that'll be in the show notes for you. There's going to be so much. You're not going to leave. You're not going to leave the same person. Let's put it that way. It means you times a million. That's, that's what we're we're going for. The glow up is real. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I witnessed it watching you. I, w- mm-hmm. I watched you just glow. So oh, thank you so much for your time and your energy and your wisdom. Mm-hmm. I just thank you for being here on earth. My pleasure to walk alongside you in this lifetime and probably beyond. And I'm just honestly so excited to put our beautiful offerings out there for the world. Again, I really believe like every woman should have the opportunity to do this and to do this alongside you. I look up to you and I just, it's an honor. It's a true honor to share this magic with you, sister. So thank you for having me and thank you for being you. Mm, the feeling is so mutual sending you all lots of love have the best day